Hey, welcome back to Parkview Student Ministries Deep Dives with Josh and Ronnie. This week, or today, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit in individuals' lives. Um, I will be asking questions, and we have our theological, biblical, the thesaurus, the thesaurus of a person, Josh Hove. Okay, so I'll come up with synonyms, I guess. Yeah, you come up with synonyms. Okay. So, Josh. Yeah. We're talking about the Holy Spirit in the lives of individuals today. Yep. All right. So we're going to kick it off with my first question is, when does the Spirit start working in someone's life? So uh, we think of the Holy Spirit as uh, working in someone's life once they've come to Christ. But the Bible is very clear that that initial step itself doesn't happen apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So... It makes sense when you think about uh, if I'm going to have you become friends with my friend, mm -hmm. you would need to meet that person. Absolutely. Right. And so because God is is bringing himself to us, like Jesus came to us, mm -hmm. it's not based on our own power yeah. that our relationship with God is restored. That's true both in Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. It's also true in coming to a saving knowledge and putting our faith in God. The Holy Spirit begins working in unbelievers' lives okay. to sort of prepare them, bring them to that point where they're aware of God for who he is okay. and desire him in that way. It, a lot of times uh, people get into sort of like the predestination debate of mm -hmm. either it's completely human will or it's completely God's will. Okay. And if it's completely human will, God's will doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't involve. If it's completely God's will, human will doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. I mean, our God is big enough that it can be both, right? God can will something, but it still be my decision, my responsibility, even though he's leading me there. So when I say that the Holy Spirit is important salvation, uh, I don't want to take away um, the importance of the personal decision okay. and the importance of the personal commitment. Yeah. But I also want to make sure that we're doing justice to uh, how involved God is in every part of that process mm. and how impossible it is to move forward in that process without the direct action of God. So okay. even before they become a Christian, mm -hmm. it's the Holy Spirit working in the people's that lives. Person. Like uh, 1 Corinthians goes so far to say, uh, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So very clearly, we, we in the church tend to think Holy Spirit's working in someone's life when they're a Christian. But it's mm. it's really important to lead up to that point. And even though we're going to move past this to once they become a Christian, mm -hmm. I really want to emphasize it because praying for the people in your life who aren't Christians yep. isn't impotent. It isn't weak. It isn't useless mm -hmm. because... So, God revealing himself, God being present in that person's life, showing them this is who I am, this is why you should follow me, okay. uh, you can absolutely and should be praying for that sort of uh, involvement of God in their life. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, to make sure we hit on that okay. because that is such an important uh, prayer topic that we should all be praying for for the people in our lives, but so often gets overlooked because we so often focus on the work of the Holy Spirit in people's lives as post-salvation. Uh, salvation. Yeah. So would you say that the Holy Spirit is, if he's, not, if he's not just coming in when we're saved, and we think back to that verse in Ephesians that you were sealed, that you touched on the Spirit comes in before. Like he's doing work. So, so could you touch it, on yeah, that a little bit more? It's a difference between the Holy Spirit working in someone's life okay. and the Holy Spirit indwelling. Okay. And in dwelling in dwell, yeah. right, dwell within, uh, it's a word we use for the Holy Spirit is inside of you yeah. as a, a sort of permanent residence. Yeah. And so where this breaks down is, for example, in the Old Testament, we talked about when the Holy Spirit came on someone, it was for a specific time. For a specific purpose. For a specific purpose. Yeah. To complete a specific task or whatever. And it's it's a little bit similar in that they didn't have this permanent indwelling. They had the Holy Spirit working in and through them mm -hmm. in the same way 
the Holy Spirit works in a non-believer's life to you know, sort of give them a saving knowledge of God and a desire to know him more mm. based on what they have known. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they are saved, then the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit uh, comes inside as sort of a permanent uh, fixture in their life. Okay. And so what that means, we, we read about that uh, in terms of this new style of indwelling that's mm-hmm. different from the Old Testament, yep. first happening in Acts 2 and Pentecost, mm-hmm. when the apostles, uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. Yep. Um, and from that point onward, we see the Holy Spirit's presence in a believer's life isn't for a limited period of time. It's throughout their life. Absolutely. And it isn't for a specific purpose it is for that relational connection, for that mm-hmm. eternal connection with God. It is uh, a full life. You know, it, if there was a purpose, it would be live life with God yep. and everything that entails. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, like in the Old Testament where it's like build stuff for the tabernacle. Yep. Well, once you're done with that, you're, done. you're yep. done with that. So let's touch on this part is we talked about... Um, with what the spirit um, starts working in someone, let's start after salvation, like yeah. sealing. Like, what does that mean so, for a believer? Uh, a lot of times, uh, people question. Mm-hmm. They see they see verses like, you know, if you love me, you'll obey me. Yeah. You know, uh, a believer doesn't do these sins. Yeah. Uh, you know, people who live this lifestyle don't know Christ. And they're like, man, I struggle with that sin. Mm-hmm. Do I know Christ? Yeah. And it's a difference between uh, living in pursuit of sin and living in pursuit of Christ. Okay. And while you live in pursuit of Christ, we haven't reached perfection. Yeah. And so we still need continual saving grace from God mm-hmm. because we continue to screw up. Yeah. And so the, the seal... Uh, there's a lot of verses that reference this, but it's it's twofold. And by seal, we mean like a, a old like seal a letter, yeah. where your you belong to God, and that is no longer able to be changed. Mm-hmm. That's no longer able to be manipulated by outside you know agents or whatever. It is uh, sealed both for your own assurance, like hey, the Holy Spirit is working in my life. And is making me very unhappy mm-hmm. about living this sin, yeah. right? And so, actually, the Holy Spirit being like, "Hey, stop doing that," is more evidence of God working in your life and mm-hmm. trying to restore and repair what you're breaking, yeah. as opposed to saying God's not involved in your life. Yeah. And so, it's it's a seal in in that believer's assurance, but it's also a seal in the sense of of God just having like a stamp of being like, this is mine. Mm -hmm. And so outside of uh, your relationship with God, it's just clear to everyone, this is mine. This is my child. Yeah. Okay. With that is like, let's move into the part where, again, we learn about the seal, but how does the spirit teach us to live a Christ-centered life? Yeah. So, so one of the, one of the big things that uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples Mm -hmm. in John 14 about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they were at a point where they weren't sure and they thought that Jesus maybe was starting an earthly kingdom. Yeah. They were still super out of it in terms Mm -hmm. of the eternal perspective. And Jesus says, hey, you're not ready for all of this truth. You can't handle it right now, but I'm sending someone after me. Mm-hmm. And uh, in John 14, 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you things and bring to remembrance all that I said to you. Mm-hmm. And the part of why this is such a, uh, why this is a part of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives that I wanted to touch on is that very often the Bible can feel intimidating. Yeah. And the Bible 
you know, it's an ancient book. Maybe you don't know the history. Maybe you don't know mm -hmm. the background. And maybe you're just trying to open it up because someone at church tells you you're supposed to. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like your life. It feels like a chore. Mm -hmm. But uh, while it's, it's dangerous to say, because I had this ideal while reading the Bible, it's from the Holy Spirit. It's also dangerous to say the Holy Spirit won't teach me things while I read the Bible. Okay. And so, uh, like, bring to remembrance all that I said to you. Yeah. How do you remember what Jesus said? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to have read what Jesus said because he didn't speak to you in person. Yeah. Uh, so if there are so many times where, like, I'm talking to someone or I'm trying to teach something and someone raises a question I wasn't expecting, and the Holy Spirit is like, hey, that thing you read like two years ago, that's what they need. Mm -hmm. And and it doesn't come independent of, you know, the word or of, uh, you know, hearing about it through a sermon or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it It's, when I say it doesn't come, I mean, like, bring, you don't remember things that you haven't found out before. Yeah, yeah. But there there's a lot of... of Oh, that's what it meant. Mm -hmm. That can happen after the fact. Like, um, learn about something and don't really see how it applies to your life. Then later, the Holy Spirit's like, "Hey, this is how it's supposed to be applied to your life." Okay. And so, the, really, want to touch on that. That's not something a believer goes through alone. Okay. That process of trying to unpack God's truth and apply it to their lives, mm -hmm. and not only apply it to their lives proactively of like, hey, I should be doing this, but then situationally when stuff comes up, being like, oh, this verse I read applies to this. This truth of God's that I know, like this is where it's supposed to be applied in my life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of times we think when we're taught it's, I'm listening to a sermon or I'm reading on my own, and that's supposed to make me a better person. And then I go off and I'm a better person. Mm -hmm. But really it's, you know, I'm listening to a sermon and I'm reading on my own. And the Holy Spirit is helping me apply that to yeah. what I need to or showing me stuff in my life that that needs to apply to. Mm -hmm. And then when I go off, you know, I'm not instantly a better person, but the Holy Spirit reminds me. Okay. Um, I really like that part. Can you touch on how the Spirit leads us in that? No, we did that one. I'm I sorry. I mean, no, it's we I could, kind of included it. You kind of, um, yeah. Let's move on to this part. Is this is interesting for me? Is how the Spirit sanctifies us. Yeah. So the term sanctify uh, means to make holy. Okay. And so we talked about how just because we accepted Christ doesn't mean we don't deal with sin. Yeah. But sanctify is that process of uh, slowly being made more and more like Jesus. Okay. And it's a process that won't be completed until we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Until uh, we no longer uh, have such a, a strong uh, inclination towards our sin nature when we're remade in this new perfect yeah. creation. But it's a process that uh, the Spirit is walking along throughout our life here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one, of the, one of the sort of uh, benchmarks for uh, is the Holy Spirit working, sanctifying me is, is the Holy Spirit visible in my life? Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit and Jesus are both God. Yeah. So uh, when I say, you know, sanctifying is being made more and more like mm -hmm. Jesus, it's because it's, we're being made more and more like God, not that mm -hmm. Jesus is the only person in the Trinity that we're ever, you know, supposed to re model. Yeah. Um, so as we're being made more and more like God, uh, like the fruits of the Spirit, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's just one example of, of things that will start to appear as we are made more and more holy, as we, as we follow the Spirit more and more accurately. Yeah. And so, uh, and this also goes back to uh, Ezekiel 36, 26, where uh, I will take... Uh, the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh mm -hmm. and I will uh, put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and obey my laws. Uh, Ezekiel saw that we couldn't perfectly fulfill God's law. Yeah. We would need God's spirit within us 
to to be able to live out God's law, live out God's will. Yeah. And so that is to to live a truly holy life is not something we can do without holy empowerment and holy guidance. Yeah. And that is what the Holy Spirit is doing in terms of making us more and more like God, not letting us be comfortable with our sin, not letting us uh, be comfortable hurting others, whether intentionally, unintentionally, whatever, mm -hmm. but to really uh, put our focus where God's focus is. Um, that's awesome. Um, moving on to this part, I know the word, the Bible talks about like the spirit intercedes for us with moaning and groanings. Can we break that down? Of Like how does the spirit pray for us or prompts us to pray? So uh, intercede, obviously, uh, act uh, in between or in place of. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times we struggle with uh, knowing exactly what we need. Right. Uh, when I think, oh, what do I need? You know, the answers are things like, you know, money. They're things like uh, situational things of mm -hmm. whatever struggles I'm dealing with. There are things around me. Mm -hmm. Right. But when we saw Jesus going throughout in his ministry and people like a uh, great example is the man who was lowered through the roof. Yeah. Who was paralyzed. Jesus saw him. And he's like, you know what this guy needs? He needs his sins forgiven. And everyone was like, oh, you can't do that. It's like, well, look, to prove I can, I'll also heal his paralysis. Mm -hmm. And so that sort of uh, discontinuity of I don't understand my needs perfectly, but mm -hmm. God does, there's, there's a degree to which uh, a lot of times we call out to God and it's like, man, I don't know what I need, but I'm relying on you for this. Mm -hmm. But God knows what we need. And so the, the verse that the you... Uh, we're referencing was uh, Romans eight twenty six, in the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Mm -hmm. So it's like things we have trouble or can't articulate. The Holy Spirit is like, "Hey God, Ronnie needs this right now," yeah. and it's not what you think you need; it's what you actually need. It also helps our weaknesses like, man, I can't deal with this on my own, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing it alone, mm -hmm. right? The spirit is there with me. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot where uh, life, uh, the majority of life uh, feels, I don't want to say repetitive, but sort of mm -hmm. cruising in, in, in a easy like, or a regular pattern, mm -hmm. but then every so often there's like a, the train wreck or the yep. the whatever. And uh, knowing that uh, God is there with you through all of that, and not just you know, God isn't there making it easy. God is there making it doable. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, moving on to the next question is, how does a spirit empower believers yeah so uh, so far a lot of what we've talked about has been sort of internal uh helping us understand more helping us be better helping us you know in our relationship mm -hmm. with god but we see that the holy spirit uh has a big role in uh not just inside ourselves but how we then um go out like interact with the world and and you know, obviously one of the, the ways we talk about is, uh, like I said, helping with our weakness. Uh, a, a great example is um, when my brother died, mm -hmm. that uh, the Holy Spirit's presence was, I just felt it so strongly with peace, with um, I'm going through this with you, I'm with you in this. Uh, it, it didn't make it fun. It didn't make it easy. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, I really felt empowered to uh, walk through that by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, empowerment on the one hand is, is able to, to handle things beyond what we should be able to handle in terms of, 
of be, be stresses or life or whatever yeah. because we're doing it with God. Mm-hmm. But a lot of I want to spend a little more time focusing on uh, what most people think of when they think of being empowered by the Spirit, and that's the spiritual gifts. Yeah, and uh, there's a couple of places in Paul's writing that it talks about them. Mm-hmm. And what we see is that the three times he, I, I'm thinking of, uh, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4, mm-hmm. the lists are different. And mm-hmm. so if it was a, you know, here's a catalog of 12 or 16 things yep. the Holy Spirit can do through your life. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to get you set up with the teaching package. Okay. So you're going to get this, you know, <laughs> spiritual gift next. Oh, you get you get the the service package or yeah. whatever. Uh, that's not really what we get from Paul. Okay. A lot of times people try to quantify, here's the spiritual gifts and it's, you know, am I an A or a B or a C? Yeah. But all of those passages uh, take place within within two important uh context Mm -hmm. that when we get hyper focused on spiritual gifts we ignore and that is all of those con all of those passages talk about the spiritual gifts being for the church Mm -hmm. not for the empowerment of the individual Mm -hmm. but for the betterment of the church body and it it, they all three of those deal with the body of christ metaphor Mm -hmm. which is to say like if one person is a heart and one person is a foot Mm -hmm. you know you're not going to run the marathon without either of them. Yeah. But the foot may be like, oh, man, that heart, he's doing so much work. and But the foot is the one hitting the ground constantly. Each time, yeah. And so when we think about uh, what role is important in the church, there's no one super Christian. Yeah. You could argue Jesus, but I'm going to move past that and say within within the body of Christ— yeah. He's the head. And amongst all of us, there's no like one archetype of mm-hmm. what following God is like because God is an infinite being yeah. with a worldwide mission mm-hmm. that requires the d- diversity of members yeah. that we are. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when all of these lists of spiritual gifts, Paul is really emphasizing, hey, this, this hierarchy of talents isn't a hierarchy It's just a diversity of talents that the Holy Spirit is empowering people in, but not to elevate them, not to put them in positions, Mm -hmm. but to better the body. And so when you hyper-focus on the spiritual gifts and not on the community, Mm -hmm. then you're missing it. And when we look at how did the community prosper, uh, it's when people are contributing uh, what they can and the most they can contribute is going to be what they're most gifted or called in. Yeah. And so, um, uh, for example, let's say uh, I have three hours to spare and $3. Yeah. And you have three minutes to spare and $30. Okay. <laughs> yeah. For this analogy. Yeah. All right. So one of us is going to put in some money. The mm-hmm. other one is going to do the work. Yeah. How should we divide that up? Like if we put in... Three dollars in three minutes, mm-hmm. right? We're going to get a very bad product yeah. that looks like we bought something from the Dollar Tree and just wrote, <laughs> "This is it," and we're done. Yep. If we put in three hours and thirty dollars, mm-hmm. in this analogy, I'm putting in the three hours, so it may still look like the Dollar Tree, but it'll, but it'll be a it's lot better. better. In the same way, it's saying, "Hey." It's not all about everyone doing the same role. It's about if God's equipped you with $30 and equipped me with three hours, let's bring that together as a unified whole. And so what's really important about talking about spiritual gifts is understanding this context that Paul's writing about them in. We really want to focus on I'm a this or I'm a this when really he's saying we're a this and that is a unified body of Christ. So now that we have that sort of framework... It's framed up. Yeah. Uh, the spiritual gifts, uh, there's different lists of them, and rather than going through all the different lists, mm-hmm. I'm just going to summarize that most of them are uh, sort of general abilities or ways that people either uh, serve or act that the Holy Spirit is then empowering them 
to do selflessly for Christ, Mm -hmm. uh, empowering them to do uh, with God's guidance. For example, uh, teaching, right? If someone is, is a good teacher, that doesn't necessarily mean they know exactly what the person needs to know. Yeah. But when, like, sometimes when I do small groups with the guys, someone asks a question, the Holy Spirit's like, hey, this is actually what he needs to learn. Yeah. He doesn't know how to ask it, but this is, this is where it's going. And mm-hmm. so in that instance, it's not that uh, my ability to teach is um, the, the only thing. Yeah. It's that something I am doing is being made more effective for the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit being directly involved in that. Mm-hmm. And it, with, same with service, right? Mm-hmm. People can do things for other people all day. But when they're doing it out of selfless love, mm-hmm. it looks different and it feels different. And we don't have that kind of selflessness without you know, God's direct involvement. Mm-hmm. Like We can't pour out of God's love without being overfilled with God's yeah. love. And so all of these, um, because the lists differ, Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're meant to be like an authoritative list. Mm -hmm. If it was meant to be an authoritative list, if these are the only spiritual gifts, Mm -hmm. then it would be the same list in 1 Corinthians as it is in Romans and it is in Ephesians, Mm -hmm. and we don't see that. Instead, we see here's ways people uh, act out of a desire to uh, serve the church body, and you don't all have to act the same. Service doesn't look the same. Mm-hmm. What's important is being this unified body of Christ. Yeah. And so uh, the reason I really want to stress that is because say that you know, you're told your spiritual gift is service. Mm-hmm. That shouldn't peg you in a service box. That should peg you in a, I am trying to contribute to the body of Christ, and this is something the Holy Spirit is is helping me with. And I am going to continue to, to work towards the body of Christ in ways that the Holy Spirit is helping me. And gift of me in that. Yeah. Amen. And so I will say, I haven't talked about the gift of tongues. Yeah. That is, there's so much uh, misunderstanding mm-hmm. and disagreements about what that means that we're going to talk about it as part of the, the week on heresies and misunderstandings about Next the Holy Spirit. Week, yeah. But, uh, even in, in that first century, the tongues was something that was uh, talked about with the intent of, hey, are you doing this to build the body of Christ? Are you doing this to build unity? Yep. Or, or, or is this something where, you know, you're trying to be set apart as the super Christian? Yep. The spiritual and, elite. And, yeah. And so, you know, we've talked about spiritual gifts for a period of time now, yeah. Uh, but I haven't mentioned any of them really specifically by yeah. name, and that's because uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Mm. When you when you have that framework of this is just the Holy Spirit aiding you in building the body of Christ. You are touching on my last question: <laughs> is um, let's frame this for a student ministry okay. aspect. Is how does the Spirit? unify like we have a leadership team yeah. how would the spirit unify that group with their gifts to so, better their lives? so i would i would first off say uh our leadership team is uh students and you can certainly uh talk to mike ronnie any of us about if that's something you're interested in but students who want to be really intentional about uh stepping into that uh building the body of christ that we've mm-hmm. sort of talked about yeah but Anyone who's a Christian is going to be called to, you know, build the body of Christ and to will manifest these as their so-called. Yeah. But in a student ministry uh, position, it's it's going to vary. Like, hey, uh, is this a new person, and am I comfortable talking to people mm-hmm. who I don't know well? Yeah. If I'm comfortable to talking to people I don't know well, and I see this person by themselves. Is the Holy Spirit working in me in such a way that I can uh, help integrate that person into the community, into the body of Christ? Mm-hmm. Uh, if he's uh, gifting me with uh, teaching, if I just sort of understand yeah. things a little better or whatever, am I contributing in small group? 
Am I trying to deepen the conversation in small mm-hmm. group? Or am I just absorbing this and being like, yeah, I get it. While everyone else, you just wait for everyone else to get it. Yeah. Because it's the leader's job to teach. Mm-hmm. Right. If it's, if it's something like service, like, are you there to just have fun for yourself? Are you watching to make sure that other people are equipped to sort of be fully integrated in the community? Like, if, if uh, you know, maybe game still needs set up and it's, you're like, well, if I help set it up, you know, then these people can get involved sooner. Yep. And so, so all of it, no matter what it is, comes back to, uh, am I allowing the Holy Spirit to work in me to build the community, the body of Christ? And so uh, that doesn't necessarily mean become the lead pastor of a church. That means uh, I am part of this body Mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it healthier. Yeah. And sometimes the body of Christ gets unhealthy. Yeah. And that doesn't mean back out. That doesn't mean bail. Mm -hmm. That means pour out what you have to make the body healthy. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a challenge. Okay. I want you to sum up. If someone was just like, I'm going to fast forward to this video all the way through. through. If we okay. could give them a minute and 30 seconds of what all of this means. Okay. The Holy Spirit takes us, a, a broken and weak person, okay. and uh, calls us and enables us to greater things. Mm-hmm. And the the first thing it calls us to is a relationship with God Mm -hmm. that we can't understand or desire or uh, really yearn for on our own. And then everything within that is, is calling us to greater than we would do on our own. Mm -hmm. Um, We learn more with the Holy spirit than we do on our own. Okay. We become more like God through the actions of the Holy spirit in our lives Mm -hmm. than we ever could on our own. Um, we're uh, better able to deal with life stresses when we walk through it with God than we could on our own. Mm -hmm. We're better able to pour into our communities with God Mm -hmm. than we could on our own. So all of this is is ways that the Holy Spirit takes what we could do and then says, but with God, this is possible. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Again, This was our deep dive on how the Spirit indwells in a believer's life and prepares them. Uh, Next week, Josh, we will touch on heresy. And misconceptions. And misconceptions. If you guys have any other questions or you felt like, man, I just got bashed over the head, uh, feel free to bring those questions to youth group or email us at, it's parkviewchurch.org, but I don't know if it's student men. Uh, we do have a students at parkviewchurch.org. We also have a parkviewstudentmen at Gmail. Gmail. We all, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Snapchat. I don't know. The, we have that one. You, I, I, Parkview doesn't have one. We don't have it. You can yeah. Snapchat Mike and ask those questions. Uh, I mean, Facebook or Instagram would be better, though, because then they go to Lindsay, and she and will Lindsay be on top will of answer it. those questions. And she will direct them to a individual if that's where they're meant to go. <laughs> So, yeah, well, this, so harass Lindsay if you have questions. Or send an email. But this concludes our deep dive, and yeah. we will see you guys next week. Thanks.